Hello and welcome to The Circularists. Today I'm interviewing Dr Shabnam. Dr Shabnam, you are an environmentalist. You have spent 20 years in academia. You've written five books, I believe? Yeah. Five books. And you are currently an environmentalist, environmental consultant. So Dr Shabnam, over to you. Would you embellish on that introduction? Tell us a little bit more about who you are, what you've done and where you're going now. Uh, thank you, Karen, for providing this opportunity uh, to me today. Um, well, as you said, I'm Shabnam, and um, I've been, my bachelor is in environmental engineering, my bachelor and master degrees. Um, my PhD was specifically on climate change, uh, modeling, and uh, carbon capturing side. We're on the road to net zero, so zero carbon yeah. by 2050 which is a long-term yeah. goal. And then there's this pit stop, this interim point at 2030, where we need to set ourselves up to hit the 2050 targets. We need to have things in place, things in motion by 2030. How are we doing right now? At the moment, economy is one of the biggest challenge every government are facing at the moment. Right. So the thing is government is doing but it's not quick enough and it is not firm enough. What I'm hearing there, Dr. Shabnam, is there's a there's a conflict between short-term immediate needs and emergencies and the, the longer term, well, not even longer term because it's already started, but this unfolding climate emergency. There are two opposing forces and needs, I guess, that, that governments are, are trying to juggle. And at the moment that, well, historically they've, um, have turned their back on the climate emergency to focus on short-termism what's in front of us what people need right now yeah would you, would you would that be fair to say it is fair to say yes so fossil fuel is is the baddie the bad guy in the room right this yeah. is the problem this the burning of fossil fuels to make stuff is causing us to emit too much co2 and we're warming the environment unsustainably and dangerously right so yeah. fossil fuel is a bad guy. Some solutions have been put forward. So we've got renewable energy. We've got these windmills and there are arguments about it killing birds. We've got arguments about the blades ending in landfill when they are at the end of their life. We've got hydrogen, green hydrogen. We've got nuclear. France is leading the charge with this. And then we've got hydropower, so water power. So how do we make, can you help us make sense of what the priorities should be? Which of these are going to be good for the getting us to the future and which not so much? Going back to your question regarding what sort of renewable energy we can. I mean, there are a way like uh, renewable energy, for instance, in UK, in North Sea, uh, is a high potential. And I believe that in Scotland, they're doing it massively for wind. You know, they, they take they generate electricity from the wind. So this is renewable energy. In France, as you mentioned, yes, they are leading towards a nuclear um plant and those nuclear plant is specifically they generating electricity another solution is thermal uh, renewable energy which we can i mean at the start of the slowly in balkans countries and also eastern european countries like croatia like um, uh, bulgaria like hungary for instance there is a massive potential of thermal energy they can extract um, and they can uh, you know generate electricity by the thermal which is so, tell me, so thermal meaning heat so where's the heat coming from I've... from the earth from the ground they oh, dig in, drilling they dig in because in those countries in hungary for instance is the source of the springs Okay. You know, those is, those is coming all from the thermal energy. Right. So those thermal right. energy, they are thinking the best and even the most sufficient transmission is thermal energy. Right, right. Um, other one is waste to energy, for instance. All the waste we are producing at the moment, it goes to land uh, landfill. Right. So um, those waste can 
also uh, generate uh, electricity. We are um, amazing. How? Uh, well, uh, yes, I mean, plastic and uh, plastic is the main pollution at the moment, wow. um, you know, as, as we all know. Yes. So the plastic, some type of the plastic can can be, um, you know, trans, uh, transmitted petrol and diesel and also gas. But the difference is, these petrol and gas uh, and even diesel, they, they are harmless to environment. Harmless? Harmless to environment. It's not acting as a fossil fuel, but they are harmless to environment. And you can easily put it in your car engine. So you're, but, say, you're saying there is a type of plastic that can be burned and used yes. for car fuel and other energy sources Yes, that doesn't have a toxic emission as its byproduct. Is that right? Exactly, exactly. We really? have, yeah, November 2020, we have that, uh, I mean, um, innovative idea. And I did work on it very heavily to just, you know, uh, to have that knowledge of waste to energy with my colleague around the petrol uh, and uh, chemical engineering and petrochemical engineering, they were helping me as well. Yes, this is happening. And I was about to even introduce it in the UK as an as a assembly and plant to just see how it is. But frankly speaking, um, the the companies the big companies are um at the moment are working around the fossil fuel are not interested because of the profit they are making um, the fuel. so it's it's we always come back to this we always come back to this there is yes. a high wall that they've built and it's difficult to scale that i've got a question for you on this on this yes, um, sure. on this plastic to cl to clean emission free energy With polyester clothing be part of the those special plastics that can be burnt cleanly or no? Um it could be. It could be the polyester one, it could be because the polyester uh, textile is, uh, as you know better than me, you've been working, I, I remember massively to make awareness in this area. Um, those are the amount of water and the amount of um, I mean, heat uh, for producing the polyester textile yes. is horrendous. Yes. And um, it could, yes, but um, yes. to purely just use this polyester cut clothing um, is not, in terms of the uh, feasibility a study of or profitability, um, not. It has to be mixed with the sort of the end use plastic we are using. Right, right. PVC, like PVC or other things. So right. yes, okay. the question is yes, but if purely to just do that, no. I mean, so by, right, so by blending, blending with other plastic products, you could yes. arrive at this clean emission Solution. Clean emission, yeah. Well, it, the thought just came to me because we know that there are truckloads arriving in landfill in places like Ghana by the second, and rather than sit in landfill emitting slow release methane, if there's a if there's an an energy resource to be to be gained from that, it's worth looking at, isn't it? We need to look at everything. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Can we return to women and girls yeah. impact? Your you, your heart beats for for women and girls in this yeah. emergency. Talk, talk to us about about that. What your work is, where you want to go with your work. Um, the reason I'm passionate about uh, raising awareness around mm -hmm. women and girl uh, equal education and also uh, make them part of the decision making to tackle the climate change is because regardless we want it or not. 50% uh, of the world population are women and girls. And uh, unfortunately, the 80% to up to 85% of the main decision maker globally are men. Mm, right. So to be able to tackle the climate change, we must 
get women and girls involved. Mm -hmm. And in developing countries, women and girls are a crucial part are supplying water and even the energies like wood, water, and uh, cooking and harvesting, farming, agricultural, cropping and everything. So women are prey the crucial part. Dr. Shabnan, it may be controversial to say this, but it needs to be said that is it time for the world, especially men in leadership who have such disproportionate power, is it time to look at the mess we're in and say, well, perhaps part of this reason is that women have been precluded from sitting at the a seat at the table where decisions are being made. Is this not a symptom right now of this gender inequality that's so entrenched? If women are well educated, girls are well educated, they can be ambassador to saving, I mean, uh, the climate change. They, they can save the environment because the women can teach the husband, the kids, and, you know, even the neighborhood and all these sorts of things. So women are very important. Yes. Right. So so what I'm hearing from you is that women can take a lead in, in this fight towards yes. net zero. Yes. Women can take a, a, a lead in this, in the home, in industry, in innovation. What concerns me is historically VC money, investment, um, it, it, only 2% of it makes its way into female-led startups. If we're at a time in history where we are trying to build tomorrow, innovation is coming out of all quarters and out of both all genders. Um, but the fact that we still have these entrenched, heavy biases is a problem. It's going to stymie innovation to a degree that's dangerous for all of humanity, right? Yeah. So if women and girls acknowledge that, then in the long term, it's not the quick fix, mm -hmm. I have to say, but in the long term, I can guarantee you men dominate society will recognize it because they don't have choice so dr shabnam this has been a fascinating conversation thank you for your insights and uh, some of the new ideas and thinking and updates that you've brought to us um so to close then i'd like to ask you what is your what is, what is your message to the world to our communities um in terms of looking at the next six, seven years to 2030, that's going to set us up for 2050. What would you want to say to business leaders, innovators, teachers, scientists, everyone who's concerned right now? What's your message? The first message uh, I send out is climate change is happening faster than we imagine. For the sake of our children and next generation, we must take this matter seriously. The second message I have for businesses, politicians, um, world leaders, make sure that to be able to tackle climate change, 50% of the population globally are women and girls. Please make sure that you have got leader, leadership and also women and girl in your panel for making decisions. Be fair, be sustained, and give more power, more funding, more opportunity to women if you're serious to tackle climate change, which you must be serious to tackle climate change. This is my message. Fair and frank. On that note, Dr. Shabnam, it's been wonderful spending this time talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank and you so we'll, much. We'll, we'll chat to you all again in the future. Thank you so much to you for providing this opportunity. I was so delighted you gave me that chance to highlight the main issue and challenges, which is everybody's worrying uh, at the moment, and especially uh, every environmentalist like me, we are um, we are deeply worried about the, the way the climate change is going. Thank you so much and uh, for providing this fantastic platform uh, to everyone to be able to uh, their voice to be heard. Thank you so much. Thank you to you. Have a lovely day. Thank you. you.